So if you're in higher level, this topic is for you. We're going to uh, add to simple harmonic motion and we're gonna do the more uh, details here, but they're not actually that hard. I love this uh, meme, you'll hear the frequency of bad physics jokes, it hurts. Sorry, if you're getting really tired of the puns, I'm sorry, because I'm not tired of them. I love these jokes. Uh, so let's first talk about simple harmonic motion. Do you remember from the SL topic we learned about this? Right? We learned a little bit how it worked, that um, we learned that the acceleration was proportional to the displacement. It was negative, of course, because uh, we could say that more acceleration meant more displacement or the other way around, more displacement means more acceleration. And we can consider that right here, right? If this here is the displacement here is zero. And over here, it's, you know, some sort of maximum. Do you remember doing this? I have some other videos showing you this. Uh, then we know that, you know, the more we displace this thing to one side, then the more force it feels, so the more acceleration it has. And we talked about how it's opposite in direction, which means, you know, if you're displacing it, uh, displacing it, let's say, to the right, uh, then the acceleration is to the left. And if you displace it to the left, the acceleration is to the right. So it's always opposite in direction. But see, now we can actually quantify it. In SL, you said, oh, it's proportional to, I guess we'll never know what uh, the proportionality constant is. In HL, we can absolutely do that. It's nice and easy. It's just A equals, and remember, look, we're looking for a minus something X. We're gonna have a minus, and we're gonna have an X here. It's just that here we're gonna put in minus omega squared. So just keep this in mind. This is the official equation you're supposed to use. I just wanna help you break it down here. So don't think that this thing is quadratic now or anything. It's still, A is still proportional to X. It's just that uh, the proportionality constant is this omega. It's not W, it's just omega. So let's maybe put in the units here. Acceleration, you know what that's in? It's in meters per second squared. Displacement from equilibrium, that's a distance, so that's in meters. And angular frequency, you have to remember how that works. Uh, we have some videos of it in topic six actually showing you that. But it's uh, basically in, it's in radians per second. Now we have a definition again. This is in your uh, data booklet. You don't have to memorize this. You have omega. That's what this is called here. Omega equals two pi over t, and that's actually because it's um, we talked about it before. That's uh, going all the way around a circle that has a radius r equals one. So that means the circumference of a circle is two pi r. But if you make r one, then it works out. So that's why you have two pi r over the uh, time. Remember, because, you know, speed is a distance over time. This is where it came from, right? Because you're going around a circle, the distance is 2 pi r over the period, but we made r1, so that just made it 2 pi over t. So this is the equation most people know. However, you may want to use, in fact, pretty much always on exams, they never ask it so easy, they'll always ask you that, oh, what's the frequency? See, that's why we have the frequency here and the hertz value, because you have to remember this equation, and this is from topic four, uh, we have it right here. It goes uh, F equals 1 over T. So the frequency is 1 over the period. So do you see how we can we can almost rewrite our omega as uh, it looks like a 2 pi times 1 over T. See that I'm just rewriting it like that. So that means it ends up being omega equals 2 pi times and 1 over T is F. So this is maybe the other useful one. So you have two different versions, depending on if you're looking at the period of oscillation or if you're looking at the frequency of oscillation. But the key thing is this one right here. A is proportional to negative omega squared x. Well, not proportional, equals. So A is equal to negative omega squared x, which means if we did a graph of this, by the way, I love the South Park one. You know, he always says, you know, whatever, you're gonna have a bad time. Here is you're going to calculate the angular frequency, you're going to have a rad time. Get it? So let's look at this equation here. We have A equals minus omega squared X. So think about this linearized. If we're going to graph A versus X, we're going to end up with a straight line because look at this. This right here. Oh, that looks crazy. This right here is just your proportionality constant. So if this is the Y value, this is the X value, then this junk right here is going to be the gradient. Now that means if it's a minus, that means it's a straight line graph that's negative, and it's gonna pass through the origin because there's no plus something or n minus anything. That means I can draw it. Uh, maybe I'll draw in a light blue. Let's see if I can do a straight line here. Ooh, I hope it's gonna work. Yeah, something like that. Something like this. But don't forget, in this case, so we can go one step further. We can say that the gradient, this is really important, the gradient equals omega squared. 
so maybe then this will allow you to do it. So if you take a graph, for example, and then you're asked to find the gradient, I've seen them ask you that, especially on paper two before. Um, then what you do is you just take the gradient, you set that equal to omega squared. Uh, so that means you could then say, I mean, if you really want to go a step further, that means omega then equals the square root of the gradient. Technically it's plus or minus, and we'll just consider the positive part here. So omega is just the square root of the gradient. So that'll actually give you the angular frequency or the angular velocity, as we say. So this is really, really important here. So um, let's do an example. I have one from an exam here. So an exam pull that we have an object, it undergoes simple harmonic motion as seen below. Do you notice we have a graph of A and we have a graph of X? What is the frequency of the oscillation? I wanna show you a trick though, or a tip, is that whenever you see a graph on an exam, always suspect that the IB is trying to be silly with you and trying to mess around with units. They do it almost half the time. So almost half the time, they're giving you weird units. And this is an example of one. Look, we've got acceleration, which is in meters per second squared, Good. And then we've got X, it's in millimeters. Hold on. That's what I always read right away. I put down like a big thing like this to remind me. Any number I read here, I have to put times 10 to the minus three meters, because that's what a millimeter is. So how will I get the frequency of oscillation? What? The only thing I can get from this graph is the gradient, isn't it? And remember we just showed the gradient is equal to omega squared. That's how I'm gonna do it. So let's try to find the gradient of this thing here. So uh, to find the gradient, I need to pick two random points and then I need to do rise over run. Isn't that how we often do it? So maybe I'll pick, uh, I need to pick points that pass right through nice things because I'm lazy here. Maybe I'll pick that point there. And I need to find another point, another point that uh, crosses these lines nicely. That way it's not so complicated for me. And actually this one right here looks pretty good. Maybe that one will work. Let's see what we do here. This one right here, let's see. To do a gradient, remember, gradient, is equal to delta y over delta x. Now keep in mind this, uh, I'm going to ignore the fact that it's negative, just because, uh, remember this really tells me that uh, the gradient is omega squared, well, you know, the absolute value of the gradient, technically it would be this, that would be omega squared. Because you can't square something and get a negative when you're done, right? So that's why, um, well, unless you do like a negative number inside the square root, but that's weird. So we'll just, we'll just consider this. Ignore the fact that it's a negative gradient. I mean, the negative tells you the shape. It certainly does. But I think if you just find the value of the gradient, that's going to be omega squared. That's the piece you need to have. Because otherwise, you can't take the square root of a negative. You're going to get in trouble math-wise, at least. Um, unless you're comfortable with complex numbers. But let's just let's keep life simpler. So the gradient is going to be delta y, delta x. So change in y. Let's see. Well, the good news is, actually, this is pretty easy. i got to go from here. This is, um, each of these lines is 100. So this is... One, two, three, four. One, two, three. This is 400. So this will be 2400. It's going to go, of course, down by this, right? Because it goes down to zero. Do you see that? So I can draw sort of a dotted line like this here, and a dotted line like this here. Now I have to figure out this is my delta y. Well, it goes down by 2400 units here. Technically, meters per second squared, it goes down by. And then in x, let's see, it goes to the right by. This here is at minus 0 0.5. So it goes to the right by 0 0.5 then. And I can see that. So of course then uh, this would be in, uh, ooh, I gotta be very, very careful. Times 10 to the minus three. Aha, that was a sneaky part right there. I almost uh, got caught by it as well. So I would do this right here on my calculator, right? Whoa, sorry. So I could do uh, 2400, divide that by 0 0.3, uh, whoa, sorry, 0.5 times 10 to the minus three, I end up with a huge number, and that's gonna be equal to omega squared. So therefore, omega equals the square root of that number. So I'm gonna take the square root of that big number. I end up with 2190.9, let's just say. And of course, this here would be uh, measured in, let's see, radians per second. This is useful. But this doesn't get me my final answer yet. I want the frequency. But remember here we have an equation for this. Omega equals two pi over t or two pi f because f is one over t. So because of that I can say then fine, omega equals two pi f. So I'll use that over here. I'll change the colors here just to change it up a little bit. So omega equals two pi f, therefore f equals omega over two pi. 
So I'm going to take my answer here, my 2190.9. I'm going to say this answer divided by 2 pi. Put it in brackets to make sure it doesn't think it's divided by 2 and then multiply the answer by pi. I end up with f equals 348.69 something, something, something like this. We have to look at how many decimals we can use, but it's usually good enough to just say 300, uh, sorry, 350, let's just say. We'll round it to the tens here. And this would be measured in hertz. So this here would be the frequency of this oscillation. So this is actually really fast. Think about it. That's 350 times per second. This is a very fast oscillation. But that's okay. It's allowed to be. So can you see how we can solve this? It looked really tough at first, didn't it? But the thing you can do from one of these graphs, you can get the gradient. And the gradient tells you omega. Well, the gradient equals omega squared. So you take the square root of your gradient. Remember, I took the absolute value of it, though, because technically the gradient was negative. That's true. But I just took the absolute value of the gradient, took the square root of that. That got me omega. And then I set that equal to 2 pi f in order to solve for the frequency. Had we wanted the period, we could have done the same thing. It would have just been uh, the uh, omega is uh, 2 pi over the period. That's it. That's how we can deal with these seemingly really tough questions.